So what were the ups and downs of Drive to you? Uh, the ups being I enjoyed it far more than a linear sort of English video productions class. Downs being a lot of the people didn't feel the same way and they treated it poorly. Well, uh, some apps were up at Shaw, loved Shaw, and um, some of the downs, hey, there actually aren't many downs, really. Um, the ups are of Drive is you got the freedom to do whatever work you have, so you can do any projects that you want, but the downside is we get, you get sidetracked a lot, there's the internet, you watch YouTube videos, and sometimes you just don't get the ideas. Too much freedom. That's both an up and a down because um, uh, with freedom comes uh, responsibility and many kids nowadays don't have that sort of responsibility. The ups and downs in drive um, would have to be that there's sometimes you feel like there's a long time for the class, like you get a little bored after a while doing the one thing. Um, but the ups are is that you form kind of a connection with everyone in the class and you know everyone a little bit better than you did before. And, that's what I would think. Um, the downsides would probably be that you really have to stay on task. Like you can get off task so easily. You can have three projects going and you can get do one and forget about the other twos. And then the ups, um, probably stepping out of your comfort zone. Like I never wanted to act. I was always behind the camera, but I was forced to get in front. Well, the downs are, um, well sometimes it's hard to stay on task because we have to self-motivate ourselves. Um, and the ups of Drive is the freedom we get. And I love being able to make our own videos and be able to go up to Shaw. It's a great experience and great learning. Well, an up is definitely the freedom to, when you have a creative just imagination, you can just go for it and do whatever you want. A downside is, without the whole class structure, you run out of ideas <laughs> really quickly. But as long as you keep helping others and people help you, it normally goes pretty smoothly. And so those are really the bigger ups and downs I find. Uh, one up is uh, you get a lot of opportunities if you do your work. If you uh, accomplish things in a certain amount of time, if you actually tell the person being your instructor or your teacher what you're actually going to do in the day and you go by your plans and actually follow your word, then you get lots of opportunities and lots of things that you can follow up on in life and I really like that up. So I'm guessing you're glad that you joined. Yes, I was very joined, very glad <laughs> that I joined. Yes, I am glad. I am glad I joined, I really am. Very much. Yes. Yes. I am. It was a good experience. Oh yeah, of course. Any favorite clips made by you or anyone else? Um, well I did like the Blair Ditch because it was nice and sunny and we got to go into the wilderness and express what we had to say and it was really awesome. I liked it. Um. My personal favorite that I made was that 2013 show, a parody of that 70s show, and it was really fun. It was a lot of funny things that went on in it. Crayon clip from the Crayola documentary when Taylor cried about a blue crayon? Um, yeah, actually I made a couple of clips that I put on YouTube. Um, one is called Collaborate and Elaborate that I really liked. Um, and the other one is Another Day in the Ghetto. That yeah, that, um, that one video that me and Dawson made, uh, the dubstep thing. And the snowball dubstep, you know, just dubstep fight thing. We're supposed to make like a snowball like drive in winter clip, but it turned to poop, and we just made it into a dubstep video. What are some favorite memories of yours in drive? My favorite memory. Personally, I think all the projects that we do are pretty awesome, so I think those are my favorite memories. Probably when we did our Halloween show at Shaw, and we had to dress Drew up because we forgot costumes, and he had to wear my shirt and we made it a turban, it was pretty good. Uh, definitely um, the, uh, the, thirst, the Games for Thirst, which I made with a couple friends. That was fun. Um, I think my favorite memory was when we went up to Shaw to learn about um, the lightings and all of that stuff. And um, it was good information to take in, so. Um, I don't know, just 
working on projects and just having these moments where you just can't stop laughing because you messed up really badly, like just builds really great memories. Yeah, um, there was one memory when I went to the skate park for one of the classes. Um, we went and filmed for an entire day, D or C and D block, and just went to the skate park. We took the bus and had an awesome time. Pretty much going up to Shaw. And then uh, probably Thursday will be a good memory. Uh, that's a, a very good question. Um, how successful did I hope it would be? Um, I hope that of the first 30 students that had a chance to participate in this class, maybe six or seven would realize that these kind of work habits, this kind of way of working really works for them, and that they would then have a better understanding of how to be successful in their senior years, it being mainly a grade 10 class. That was like, for me, what success would look like. Um, rather than it being six or seven, I'd say it's closer to more like about 15 or 16, which to me is, is double what I expected. Um, I've seen students mature in a way that I really didn't expect. Um, I know that sometimes students grow a lot in this first semester of, of Cary High in their grade 10 year, but the maturity change has really been the mark of success for me. think you'll have some of the grade 10s now, but grade 11s? Um, I think that's something that I've, I've come to accept could be really positive. When I created this model originally, I, I never once thought that a student would take it twice. I thought it was a starting point for them, that they would have a way of learning and, and studying, that they would apply then in their other senior courses, so they would take it to the next level themselves. But looking at the way it would benefit a lot of kids to come back and learn English 11 this way, and then support other grade 10 students. That added piece never occurred to me till just in the last month that I could see a lot of current grade 10s. It would be a great fit to their learning to actually mentor some grade 10 students. I think that would really help them. So yeah, I'll take some kids back. And how will you choose those kids out of all 30, do you think you'll interview them, get references as well? I very much will. Oh yes, for sure. Um, one of the big things that's happened this semester, Max, and spending so much time with everyone, is I've had this really neat opportunity to figure out people's character. I've seen them in situations of adversity, I've seen them in situations of uh, pressure and stress. Um, I've also seen them when they're 100% responsible for their own time. And uh, students realize pretty quickly I have photographic memory, I have a really easy time remembering what everybody has done for the whole four months they've been here. So a pretty good sense of, of their character. So yes, I will expect them to go through the interview process and prove to me that they would be able to play the right kind of role as an 11. Because the one 11 that was in this room, I couldn't ask that of her. I didn't expect that that was something I could officially ask. But for the repeating students, I definitely would expect a higher level of responsibility.